Living Waters presents On the Box. Hi, Julia Rose. Yeah, hi, Julia Rose. Welcome to On the Box. Julia's here. Your, your lovely yes, granddaughter's so here. Beautiful. One of my grandchildren. One of your, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. From the Zwayne family. Beautiful for husband soon. What's that? <laughs> Godly husband. Godly husband. Wonderful mother. Wonderful. Great grandparents. Yes. And uh, she thinks highly of her brothers and sisters, too. She certainly does. She certainly does. We also have George and Priscilla with us. Yes. George, uh, George our printer. George serves over at uh, Tony's Printing in Downey. No relation to this Tony, uh, but uh, a great organization. And uh, what are you doing, Danny? Ray's mic is not on. Oh, Ray's mic's not on? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So we need to fix that. So I'll just keep talking. Keep talking. Mark, I think, I, think, I think Danny actually jumped. <laughs> Mark, how you doing, man? Somebody just said we like it better when we can't hear Ray. Oh, that's just wrong. Yeah. You want to share? Thank you. If Might Tony's mic was not on, we would not know that's it. That's good. Thank you. Um. <laughs> so, Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they go to you soon. Mark. Mark. <laughs> Mark. I, I got nothing to say. You what am I saying okay. to that? All right. All right. Are we working now? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm we're on. on. We're on. We're live. Cool. Back yes. over to Ray. Ray wants to talk about what happened yesterday at Cerritos. We had a good time yesterday. <clears throat> yes, we did. Yeah, what? What? Talk uh, about a hit and run. It was a hit and run. <laughs> um, but what? What? It reminded me of something that happened about 30, 40 years ago. Whoa. Um, where I came in and said to you, "Come in today," and you said, "I got so much on," and I was going to say to you, "Come on, Tony," uh, but you said, "Come on, Tony," to yourself, and you yep. showed up and yep. you preached and it went really, really well. Um, Years ago, I was an assistant pastor, and I had committed myself to take someone into the local square, which is six miles from the ministry in those days. And when I came out, it was a windy day. It was kind of looked like it was going to rain. It was cold. I thought, I, I'm just not going into the square today, but I committed myself to go, and so I went in. And as I was setting up, I saw there was a rock band setting up across from the square. Have you heard this story? No, I don't think so, no. Well, neither have I, so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so it was this rock band <laughs> setting up. So I went across, and I said to them, how long until you start your rock music? And he said, 20 minutes. So I said to myself, send me out loud, 20 minutes, hardly worth preaching the gospel. And I looked down, and I saw a piece of paper at my feet. And I thought, what is that? There was no other paper around. Picked it up, and it was a page from the Bible. And uh, I looked down, and my eyes went straight to a scripture, and it said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. Oh. It was the book of Corinthians. So I looked at the page number, and it said 1,063. Now, I'd been preaching up to that time about eight, for eight years each day. I'd never seen a page from someone's Bible floating around in the square okay. on a windy day right. where I would grab it when I'm saying 20 minutes hardly worth preaching the gospel, and it was a Bible with over uh, 1,063 1, pages in it. So I just grabbed that, looked at it, <coughs> oh, boy, this is a word from God. So I got up and I preached my heart out, and it was worth preaching the gospel. Wow. And I've always remembered that, and I was going to say, Tony, Come and you did, and we had a great time. Yeah, well, it, it's uh, interesting. Uh, things were moving very fast yesterday. Uh, we finished the show at noon out here in California. Uh, we had a m very important 180 meeting at one o'clock. Uh, you played hooky from the show yesterday, so you can get a head start. <laughs> and uh, and I'm thinking, ah, there's no way. By the time we get over there, it's going to be quarter mm -hmm. after 12. There's not going to be any time. But you looked at me, and you had a look. Like an older brother looking at his younger brother going, you're not really going to let me down, are you? You're not <laughs> really going to stay here. You're not really going to not keep to your commitment to come, are you? And you didn't say any of that, but your eyes said all of that. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, yeah, oh yeah, we're going. So what happened when you got there? When I got there, you were preaching, mm -hmm. and uh, I purposely did not wear a hat or bring sunblock <laughs> because we had been preaching in the shade. You found a very lovely spot. Oh, Dan it's really good over there. Acoustics were great. Acoustics were great, and, and Daniel said, oh, you know, I should have brought a hat. And I said, don't worry. Your dad's been setting up in the shade mm -hmm. lately. And we get there, and you are in the brightest, sunniest spot of the campus. It was hot. It was hot. But you <laughs> yeah. had a great crowd, great-sized mm -hmm. crowd, and you were going at it. I mean, you were passionate. You were going at it, uh, engaging people about evolution, that fairy tale that they teach on college campus campuses and uh and then a guy came up who what wanted was his to, name uh what was Daniel? his name um, no, no no that was the guy that heckled me the guy that heckled me guy was, was hang on, i gotta mention the okay. guy that heckled me his name was emmanuel jason and he had long hair on that and he wasn't a christian he's very he's an atheist but uh and then jason got up jason got up a uh, professing christian mm -hmm. who uh, wanted to get up immediately after you preached uh to basically undo everything you did to promote the love gospel 
And he yeah. was there a couple of weeks ago, and he got up after I spoke, or after we spoke, and said, God just wants to love you and you to believe in yourself. You could be president. Oh, and was he the same guy? Yes, and the, and oh. the, and the crowd clapped. Oh. You get applause from And here I was holding back. That's I didn't know it was him. I'm sure it was him. That's Although the, some don't think I was holding back. That, <laughs> that's the gospel that gets applause from the world. Yeah. God loves you, and he wants you to be president. So you looked at me, and you said, Tony, do you want to take him on? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, yes. <laughs> and uh, so I let him, I let him spiel because he wasn't mm -hmm. preaching. I let him spiel for a couple of minutes or so, and I couldn't take it any longer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well. The great burst. It was a burst, <laughs> yeah. But, it, but uh, I think it went well. And it went very good. He came up af afterwards. He followed and us And as usually follows the car and says, actually, I agree with what you guys are saying, but, but God really wants us to be happy. And... Yeah, no, but you don't use happiness as a draw card right. to get people to come to Christ because they come for a wrong motive, and you don't get happy when you become a Christian. You get hated. Yeah. And uh, we gave him Hell's Best Kept Secret yes, to we listen did. to. So yeah, Eddie did. Eddie, Eddie gave him that, and so yeah. hopefully he's going to listen to it. All right. Uh, we want to get to the chat room. We, we haven't been spending enough time live in the chat room. We want to do that today. So uh, we're going to share with you something that uh, Mark and Eddie and I put together just this morning. And, of course, our uh, wonderful team. Is this a video? It's a video. Is our wonderful team, Dave and Danny. Oh, yeah. I'm skipping around, guys. Our wonderful <laughs> team who are <laughs> looking at their sheet going, wait a minute. Where is he now? Where is he doing? <laughs> our wonderful team, very, very patient. Uh, we got them this video at the last minute. Uh, Mark and Eddie played the stalker in the undercover van, followed me around on the freeway uh, so that we could show you. When was this? This morning. They followed you on the freeway? Yes. Watch. How do they keep up? Just watch. <laughs> no, watch. <I'm laughs> this is Tony with Living Waters, and I want to share with you today a, a neat way to advertise our brand new documentary, 180. For those of you who aren't aware, Living Waters is in the middle of producing a documentary dealing with the abortion issue, and it's simply called 180. Now, I found an easy way to advertise a documentary by simply putting a window decal on my car. We've placed the file, the vector file, on the Living Waters site in the store under free downloads. You can download it, take it to a local print shop. They'll likely install it for you as well. And just driving to and from work around town, coming to the mall, hundreds if not thousands of people will see the 180 Movie website and the logo and be intrigued by that and go and check out the documentary. I had mine done at uh, Tony's Printing, a local print shop in Downey. Very easy to find print shops in your area. They're all over the place. Go in there with the file. They'll be able to reproduce the decal and install it for you. I had mine done for about 50 bucks. It's simple. It's fast. It's a great way to promote the documentary. And we want to get the word out because we know this documentary is not only going to save the lives of the unborn, but millions of people will hear the gospel and come to faith in Christ as well. Wow. <laughs> I'm your like burst. Yeah. I don't usually yell, but <laughs> that is incredible. It's like 50 how bucks. Coo how cool is it to be able to serve in a ministry like this where you can pop into someone's office and say, hey, let's do this. Let's do this video today. Let's get this out there. Yeah. And uh, Mark dropped what he was doing. Eddie dropped what he, what he was doing and uh, put that together uh, this morning. You can download the file. It's called a vector file. You I want one of those for my forehead. It might be a little smaller okay. than, than the back of my window. But you can go to the Living Waters uh, website, go to our resource page, go to free downloads, and then you will go to the section under print, and there you'll see a picture of the back of my car, the window. You can download the vector file and the PDFs uh, so that you could see what the image looks like. You take that file to your local print shop, and if they're as good as Tony's print shop in Downey, uh, they'll be able to, to well, do that for you. Well, we could talk with Tony to see if we can get a deal so we can make them available through the ministry. Well, we could do all that. We'll mm. do that at another time. But anyways, that's just that's a real simple way uh, to, to oh, get the word Tony, out about Oh, Tony, what a wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah. All right, now, Mark, how did I drive today? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I told Ray I made a vow never to get in the same vehicle as you because what? you have the ability to drive like a cop still. Does that make you nervous? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it does. Why? Yeah, I value my life. I got five beautiful kids. All right, so the first question yeah, inside here oh, is, okay. can you see through the decal? Is that Because the stickers seem to be uh, obstructing your view. Did it obstruct your view when you were driving? Well, most of the time I didn't even know I had a back window. But no, um, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't obstruct the view. But uh, certainly here in California, and I'm sure it's the case in most states, if so long as you have two side mirrors on your car, 
um, you can completely black out the rear window, and it's perfectly legal to drive. Think about well, someone that's driving a pickup truck with a trailer or a camper shell on it. They can't see out their back window either, so they utilize the side mirrors. So, so long as you have two side mirrors, putting a decal like that on your back window uh, will not obstruct your view. Tony, I'm so pumped about that. You that like is it? so neat. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. So you didn't ask, ask the question, Mr. Oh, Spence. Oh, yeah, Mr. Spence, you didn't you answer got out of that. How did I drive today? Come Be on. You, you drove better than you normally do. How do you, let's, wait, let's how do that. you know that? <laughs> well, because we've... I followed you out to Hollywood many times for Academy. You and tried to like lose that. me once. <laughs> well, I, I lost you once. You no, couldn't you keep didn't. up. Yeah, I'm a better no, driver. No, I was. Oh, oh, oh. All so right. Tony's got one of those right, stickers so on the back of his car. One of those stickers that says, "How am I driving?" It's an 800 number, but you can never get Actually, through. Actually, it's Mark Sell. You can never get, <laughs> <laughs> you can never get through because it's so busy. <laughs> no, wait, a, no, I, wait a minute now. Mark mm. just challenged me. What to? To a driving contest. Yeah, Mark drives very well. We just about got killed, didn't we, Mark, once when you were driving? Yeah, we were in Michigan. <laughs> we were on our way to the airport in a rental car, and we were on, was it one lane going this way, one lane going this way, and all of a sudden, a lady wanted to make a left-hand turn in front of us, and she pulled out in front of us, and she just stopped. And we were going the speed limit, which was about 65, and I had to swerve into oncoming traffic, and then I swerved back, wow. and uh, we barely survived. But Remember we what did. we said to each we other did. after that? She probably, <laughs> yeah, that's right, and we said that she probably pulled over and cried oh, yes, as soon as definitely. she saw us, because, she, Ray, you saw her face? Yeah, she was, a, she was a dead woman. She was like 40 feet in front of us when you swerved. It was, she, she couldn't do anything. She just had that look of death she, personified. Yeah, she, she was just sitting in front of, like that, looking at us, and realized what she had done, and if Mark hadn't had taken that step, and if, well, she would have died, or we had died, if a, in oncoming traffic had been coming. Well, glad and no that would be died. annoying, because you'd be by yourself today. That would be really annoying, yeah. All right, this week's giveaways. We'll move along from driving and uh, stay tuned because we have to find a way for Tony and Mark to work out this challenge of driving. <laughs> we know some friends in NASCAR now. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, you would win, Tony. No, not necessarily. Speed. Oh, okay. That's all we're talking about. Uh, this week's giveaway, first prize, a hardcover edition of the New Evidence Bible. Uh, second prize is the pocket size lie detector, which is really cool. And the third prize is five packs of trillion dollar bill gospel tracks. Email us at onthebox at livingwaters.com, onthebox at livingwaters.com, full name, full address, and your zip code. Enter only once, please. Got an email yesterday. What do you mean by that? Enter only once. Once ever, just once a week. Once a week, and uh, you can enter every week uh, if you'd like. Okay. All right. Uh, we have another video we want to show you. Mark, uh, we showed... We showed a, I guess it would be called a rough cut of this, a couple of weeks ago after Transformed. Oh, yeah, it was a rough cut, yeah. Yeah. Mark, who does such excellent work editing Oh, cross over to Mark to see what he looks like while he... <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I don't know where Mark was going, but Mark is going somewhere. Um, and while Mark is going, uh, we are going to watch this video. It's uh, another promo for the 180 documentary. Take a look. Lenzine, you just seen 180. What do you think? I loved it. It's thought-provoking, it's convicting, and it um, shows you the heart of the people in this earth. Would you vote for someone who is pro-abortion? Yeah. So have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yes, I have. <laughs> I, it was very powerful, very moving. I wish it, I had had it available for my granddaughter because she just had a a late-term abortion, and it tears me up that she done this. I loved it, and I want to get lots of copies of it. I believe that people have the right to choose. Well, have you just changed your mind about abortion? Yeah, I think I've just changed my mind. Are you going to vote differently in future? Yeah. You mean that? Yeah. Very touching. Eye-opening. It was devastating. This is a powerful, powerful message, and uh, it's a must-see for everybody. It was... Uh, life-changing and world-changing. I think it's one of the most incredible tools I've ever seen. All I can say is I want to be involved in handing it out to as many people as I can. Go to 180movie.com for details. All right, now that, that was a premiere of mm -hmm. that promo. You can't find it on YouTube yet. It's going to go live on YouTube on Monday mm -hmm. out with our weekly update. And so our viewers here at On The Box were the first to see it. Well done, Mark. That was great. just want to say, if anyone's concerned we're becoming a pro-life ministry, it's not true. We're an evangelistic ministry. We're out to reach the lost. The gospel is the power of God to salvation. Um, abortion is just one ugly tree on the 
a branch on the tree of the Adamic wicked nature of humanity and the, the gospel a lays the X at the root of the tree and we're going to keep laying that X at the root. Amen. Chop away. Mm. All right. All right. We're going to spend the less, rest of the time in the chat room. Mark, you say some good questions are coming in. What's up? All right. Yeah. Question number one, any advice for taking some first timers out? We just finished seven of the basic training last night and we're heading out tonight. So do you have any advice for people who've never hit the streets before that are a little nervous. Mark, why don't you start us off? You're leading yeah. an evangelistic team at Kindred. You know, absolutely. This is what I say. I say, hey, come out on Friday night, sit underneath the teaching that Easy and I do, and then come hit the streets. You could be a fly on the wall. You don't have to open up your mouth. You don't have to do the approach, and you don't have to transition from the natural over to the spiritual. Just come right alongside of us and watch us do all of that, all the hard work. And if at any point you want to say something, then we'll take a step back as the leader or any of the leaders that are part of the team. Uh, and it will allow you as a first timer to begin to speak out. And when you begin to sink, if you were, then we jump in there and we begin to say whatever it is that seems to be lacking. But you can come along and you don't have to say a word. So this is my advice for the teachers and for the leaders out there. Tell them that. It takes a lot of weight off of their shoulders if they've never shared their faith or maybe they are just a little bit of a novice at it. They're a little too young and they're a little afraid. You do all the work and allow them just to see how easy it is. So that's what we do for uh, first time and even people who've been there for a while that are just a little timid. You know, after a while you'll hear what's going on and you'll want to say something. Yeah. You'll just uh, let me answer that. You'll be um, chomping at the bit. Yeah. Yeah. Great answer. What's next? All right. How do you show an atheist that objective morality does not exist outside of God? Oh. All right, Mark, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this is your expertise. Well, without an authoritative figure such as God telling us what is right and wrong, my challenge to the atheist would be, how do you know what is right and wrong? I'll come up with 10 things that are right and wrong. You shouldn't lie, you shouldn't murder, you shouldn't covet. I'll go through my whole list of 10 things. Now, you as an atheist, come up with 10 things that are wrong. After they're done doing that, I say, how do you know those things are wrong? Because you don't have anybody telling you those things are wrong that have any sort of weight as the same caliber as God. You see, as an atheist, you live in an autonomous world where you get to decide what is right and wrong, good and bad, sacred and secular. So to you, it may be wrong to cheat on your taxes, but why is it wrong for... John Q. Public to cheat on his taxes. Well, it doesn't benefit society. Well, but why is that wrong? You still haven't answered the question. Because society's not benefited, but why is that wrong? Why does society need to benefit? Isn't it part of your worldview that let the, the strong survive? Do whatever it takes to climb to the top, right? Well, if that's the case, well then what's wrong with lying and stealing and murdering? You see, because you have nobody telling you what is right and wrong, then there is no such thing as right and wrong in your worldview. But according to the Christian, we know what is right and wrong because of the Bible. Now, I dare to say you also know what is right and wrong because you've been given a conscience. The inner light that God has given to every man, woman, and child to where you know what is right and wrong, but you have to begin to borrow from my worldview. And Ray Comfort just shot a rubber band at me. <laughs> but what makes that wrong? <laughs> Anything you want to Love add to your that neighbor one, right? yourself. Yeah, God wrote the uh, commandments in stone for a reason. Yeah. They're eternal. They're permanent. They're permanent. <laughs> and the commandments are uh, actually the character of God manifest. Uh, there wasn't a time in eternity when it was okay to murder and steal and lie, and God thought, oh, I'll just make up a right and wrong. It's, uh, God's law is eternal. It's uh, an expression of his character and nature. Yeah. And, you know, uh, thanks to Mark. I mean, I've learned a lot from Mark over the years. And one of the things he's taught me is how easy it is to break down someone's uh, godless worldview by, by simply helping them to see what they already know in, in their heart. Yes. That the individual doesn't determine what right and wrong is, what good and evil is. The society doesn't. That there is one outside of both society and the individual, namely God. Society uh, shapes, standard. shapes, but it doesn't initialize. That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's take another. Uh, Tony, since the top of your head is bald when you bend over, what do you think about painting the 180 logo <laughs> on the top of it? You know, oh, if, if I was... Hey, well, that's a bit cruel. No, no, no. no, no that's a bit below no, the belt. No, there's a good answer. There's a good answer for this. I, there is? I don't yeah. come up with the questions. I just read it from the chat. Why did you look, gravitate to that if one? I was, if, I was, if I was 25 years old and I had nothing better to do with my life than to go to you know, Packers or Steelers games, I would paint the top of my head. 
But I'm 47, happily married for a long time, <laughs> three grown children, and the women in my home would definitely not like me painting logos on the top of my head. But aren't you going to have a logo on a hat that's going on your head? Yeah, but I could take the hat off. That's right. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Great. So I'm are. glad I got a question today. All right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say when people tell you that you can't trust the Bible because it was written by men? Oh, man, I wish we had the video you did for uh, season four. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> right, okay. Um, I just love listening to okay, you talk, so man. I, so you say you can't trust the Bible because it was written by men. I ask them, hey, how old are you? And they say, I'm 25. And I go, 25? How do you know you're 25 years old? Well, because I have a birth certificate written by men, right? So uh, can you prove to me that you're 25 years old? Well, I have a driver's license as well, written by men. Right, so you do trust certain documents, certain things that were written by men, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. But test all things, Scripture says, hold fast to that which is true. You know, uh, the Apostle Paul, he gave mad props to, uh, was it um, those in Thessalonica because, uh, no, excuse me, the brains, because they were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica because they tested daily the things which they were being told and heard. You see, the Bible is not merely one book, right? It's 66 books written over a period of 1,500 years by 40 different authors with many different occupational backgrounds with one central main theme. How does man avoid hell, come into a relationship with his maker, and go to heaven? Filled with many hundreds of scientific and medical facts. It's the only book that dares to step out on a limb and tell us things that will come to pass before they come to pass. It's called prophecy. You see, no other book dares to do and say the things that the holy writ of God does. So you say, well, it's written by man. Well, okay, so it's written by man. That makes it all the more beautiful. That God can grab a hold of a timeless, inerrant, inspired, and infallible word and grab a hold of that and channel that through an individual like a conduit to convey a timeless message. That's the God we serve. Pretty amazing. Amen. Rick? Oh, yeah. Um, I like to say, yeah, it was written by man. It didn't evolve. <laughs> you know, it wasn't some explosion in a printing factory and <laughs> out came the Bible. Um, and, of course, we like to say, you know, when someone says, you know, the Bible's filled with mistakes, uh, yeah, there's certainly at least one yeah. man's rebellion against God. Yeah. And when you ask them to show you the contradictions or mistakes, they, they can't. can't. No, come up they're with cutting anything. pasters off the internet. Yeah. Uh, they troll around the internet and they go, aha, here's something that says the Bible's wrong. And the other thing, too, is that whole analogy of uh, when you take a pen, do you write the letter or does the pen? Right. Well, you write the letter, but the pen is the instrument you use. And God used men as the instruments to write his letter to humanity. So uh, the Bible says they're inspired of God, and you can see the fingerprint of God all over the scriptures. If you take the time to study it and not nitpick it, if you nitpick it, you're going to find things that are going to cause you to stumble. But if you have a humble heart seeking truth, uh, you'll find the Bible proves itself axiomatically. Yeah. And certainly the, the God who created all things is more than able uh, to write, uh, produce his word, protect it <coughs> over time. I, and, and there's no book, no book ever written, no book ever penned by men that has been more scrutinized, more studied, more picked apart than the word of God. And more hated or more, and more, hated. And more loved. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> you remember Emmanuel yesterday the test of time. Uh, called out to me, so you believe a book that tells you that Noah brought all the animals into the ark? And I said, no, I don't. It was God that brought the animals into the ark. And when you bring God into the equation, then the supernatural enters and then anything goes. You can walk on water, stop the mouths of lions, find strength in someone's hair and inspire men to write books. So... Uh, with God, hair, with God, yeah. yeah, that's coming, new world coming, new hair coming for Tony. Um, with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Wait, well, that was a me, was it? Okay. Mark, another. All right, so what do you say to someone who can't seem to clearly articulate on how they became a Christian? What do you mean by uh, that? Could you clarify the question? Yes. <clears throat> Somebody doesn't have any idea how they became a Christian, but they know that they're a Christian. Okay. Is that yeah. articulated enough? Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was kidding, Mark. That I was know. very well put. It was very Thank clear. You. What was he saying? I like to use three minutes to live. We talk about it often uh, on oh, the yeah. program. Uh, a person, what comes out of a person's mouth is going to reveal uh, the condition of their heart. And uh, if you apply just a little bit of pressure, a person's going to revert back to what they know. And so I'll simply ask a person uh, who professes to be a Christian, okay, uh, you're a Christian, I'm not. I've got three minutes to live. Uh, you know I don't know Christ. What are you going to say to me? 
and 99 times out of 100, they just stumble and stammer. They for go into confusion. They go into confusion. And you die because right. three minutes is up. Yeah, yes, <laughs> exactly. And what they have just shown is that they don't know the gospel. And you can't be saved by a gospel you do not know. Right. Now, now, granted, there, there's a difference between someone who, who just came to faith in Christ and how they articulate the gospel and Ray, who's been preaching the gospel for 40 years. You know, obviously, Ray might be more fluid in his presentation than someone who's been a Christian for a few months. But yet, uh, even a brand new believer is going to know that they were once lost and now they're found blind. Now they see. They're going to know that they've turned from their sin and put their trust in Christ alone for their salvation. Even if it isn't pretty when it comes out of their mouth, they're going to give glory to Christ right. and they're going to give him the credit for their salvation. A person who can't do that, the likelihood is they are not saved. And that three minutes to live is one way to bring that out of them without pointing a finger at them and declaring yeah. them right. uh, unsaved. <coughs> Good point. Yeah. Like that. Mark? Yeah, you know, I like what Todd Friel does. He uh, approaches an individual uh, in the same exact scenario. Then he'll say, hey, have you ever been in a car accident? Yeah, well, tell me about it. Now, how is it that you can recall a car accident that happened inside your life with such great detail to me right now when it happened a while ago. Why? Because it was an important event that happened inside your life, right? Well, that's what Christianity is. When you're walking a path that seems so broad and then you're brought onto a straight and narrow path, you're able to do it. Why? Because something radical happened in your life by the most radical individual that has ever lived. Amen. And that's Jesus Christ. I'm going to use that one too. That's pretty cool. I like that. Christianity is like an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and like with it. that, Christianity is like an accident. <laughs> Wow. That's an accident radical. waiting to happen? Mm -hmm. No. That's radical. Yeah. All right. Hey, we hope you have a, a wonderful weekend. We hope you're going to be out uh, to proclaim the gospel. Sunday is the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. And uh, don't avoid that issue. Millions of people are going to be thinking about that. They're going to re be remembering where they were that day. Very sober. In fact, I'm going to be going out with a camera to Third Street Promenade tomorrow, asking people that question, where were you on September 11th, 2001? And use that as a segue into the I gospel. Like it. You like Eight it? seconds to go. Okay. Until Monday, be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. Proclaim the gospel and put a decal on your car. 180movie.com. Presents On the Box.